G'day, and welcome back to Wellywood Wargaming. This is the second part of my um, Beastman Bad Zone Enforcer kit bash video. This part is going to be the painting of it. Now, I wasn't very prepared for this. I only had five days before the start of our new campaign here in Melbourne, so this definitely is a speed painting competition for myself. Um, remember, all of my stuff is back in Wellington. I had to um, get rid of all my paints. So I'm starting again here, and I don't have any money either or equipment. So I started buying some very cheap brushes, only two brushes. I believe uh, and a makeup brush and some crap paints which um, came out of the pot pretty bad actually and this ended up being a very glossy sort of black I think it was game color and not model color by Vallejo um, and I should have probably known that we then did a incredibly heavy dry brush with a massive, massive, massive makeup brush that I got incredibly cheaply from Chemist Warehouse. It was, I think it was four bucks, but yeah, it's too big for the job. It creates a very messy, thick looking dry brush here, but this is slap chop speed painting here. So um, this is what you get for your money. Um, so um, I hope you're enjoying it so far. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, a few people criticized one of my previous videos because I labeled it a slap chop. It was definitely a version of slap chop, just my own version of it. This, however, is 100% pure slap chop, so no criticisms on this one, thank you. However, the painting quality in this video is, um, you know, leaves something to be desired, I suppose. However, like I said, we are trying to get this done very, very fast here. So we are using the, the black out of the pot we didn't have uh, money for the spray pot so i'm then going to go with wraith bone over the top um, and this is just the collage of me slapping lots and lots of wraith bone on i didn't actually bother going any lighter or uh, going with a mid-tone or a gray or anything like that i just went straight from black to wraith bone um uh, because I'm lazy and only had five days for it. So as you can see, it's brought out all the detail kind of okay-ish. Um, these guys are looking great. I love the models anyway, um, but I'm not sure about how this paint job is going to go. I've got a scheme which I have um, seen uh, out there in the community. Um, shout out to, I can't remember your name actually. I'll have to put your name on the video afterwards. Um, but an Instagram account that's done some really amazing conversions uh, for sort of Inquisimunda by the looks of it and they've got a quite kind of baby blue armor with an orange tint um, anyway getting into it we're going to be using some Citadel contrast because I'm just comfortable using it and that's what slap jobs all about we do dry brushing and then we do contrast I've got three or four different browns here skeleton horde for the bones we've got gourd gore grunter fur here for the fur we had Wildwood just there as well for all the leathers, sort of chocolate brown, and we've got Dark Oath, Dark Oath Flesh for the skin tones on these guys. So four different browns, a very, very limited palette here. Um, and this is me just starting with blocking out, blocking out the skin on these little beastie gores, uh, I think they're called. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I really hope uh, you guys are... Um, staying tuned with this because it's a little little hobby project that I've wanted to do for quite a while actually um, and as soon as the bad zone enforcers um, came out and that white dwarf magazine and I ended up doing a you know a video um, a sort of tactics video on on the bad zone enforcers um, a guide to I knew that I had to um, make them into abhumans or at least beast men so having done one of these conversions before um, for one of my previous gangs it turned out really well so I knew that I'd be able to do um, at least do one uh, of them again but to be honest uh, they vary slightly some of these uh, legs did not fit on very well I had to do a lot of cutting um, but it ended up turning out pretty well I think the leader looks great here actually if you can see um, but yeah um, now I'm just adding the fur on this one the fur and the hair um, and we are going for a pure slap chop uh, method here. So it's, this is literally just contrast paints over the top of a heavy dry brush. Um, it's not even Zenithal, it's only, it's only the, the two colors so far. Um, but, and sticking to a very, very, very limited palette here with the four different browns. However, um, what I intend to do, and I don't know whether I'll do it by the end of this video because this is kind of a... Uh, a work in progress, I suppose, is um, get them at least table ready for the start of the campaign. But um, I might sort of go back to them if I can um, and add some oils and some other weathering details just to make them look a bit more sort of my style, I suppose, because I don't think I'm entirely happy with the uh, the slap chop method in general. It's OK, but it's um, it's really just for getting stuff table ready. It's not, um, you know, it's certainly not advanced painting at all. 
However, you can do some little things to make it look, uh, you know, stand out more. And that's obviously going in and sort of highlighting everything up from there. You, you certainly can do that. And I intend to do a bit of that myself as well. Um, as you can see here, I've done the fur, I've done the leather pouches, I've done the skin. I'm now going in um, and blotting out the horns. In fact, that's the only sort of bone detail, I believe, on the entirety of the model. But they have got some big, uh, big horns on them as well. The next thing I'm going to do is go in with Black Templar. So this is uh, not a brown, in fact, this is a black, uh, of course. And we're going to do the entirety of the undergarments, the skirts and the um, sort of suit that they're wearing, the undersuit that they're wearing under their armor, all with black. We're also going to block out some of the details on the guns and weapons as well, um, leaving the metallic areas for last. Um, but yeah, I use, um, I use the Black Templar Citadel contrast paint quite heavily in most things because I do think it's just easy and it's great and it's quick. So onto the interesting part, we've got Vallejo model color light sea gray. Now this color, um, again, I found it on an Instagram account, someone using it. Um, I've, I've got a verdigris here as well, which I'm gonna intend to use as a, as a sort of wash and I've got a bright orange here as well. These are all Vallejo colors. I am not that experienced using Vallejo. In fact, I do often just use Citadel paints, but as you can see here, we are suddenly changing tactics and not um, staying with the um, slap drop met method as we start um, layering on some of this light sea gray onto the armor. So it's, it ends up being a sort of um, collaboration between your slap chop and your sort of standard method of painting here, your sort of heavy metal style, I believe, and that's just for the armor, um, just for the armor only, in fact. So as you can see, the light sea grey has a sort of, I guess, sort of baby blue slash sort of turquoise to it. Um, there's another colour that I really, really like and have used before in the Vallejo range, which is um, a sort of smoke grey, I think it's called, heavy smoke grey, which is really, really similar sort of tone, but uh, with a pinkish quality to it. So it's like a pinky grey. Um, here you can see I'm using that verdigris, verdigris sorry, um, and watering it down quite heavily and just smacking it all over that armor. Um, apologies for the blur there as well. I'm a little bit out of focus. Um, but it's not quite as dark as I would have liked. However, I'm just going to stick with it because I've got no other options here. But as you can see, it goes on. Um, I did one coat of the light sea gray. I probably could have done two just to make it look a bit smoother. But we are strapped for time here. Um, what the verdigris has done though has, has kind of pushed it further into the turquoise sort of um, field I suppose this color here um, and the, the armor is going to end up looking incredibly bright which you'll see in a second here uh, that's the leader again looking really nice Captain Kalahari I believe his name is I think I've given them all names of actual breeds of goats because um, I'm clever like that and Google's great but yeah, here we're blotting out the um, the metallic parts. There are some, some little sort of um, fandangos on the back. We're going to do the sort of hooves as well, which have got, you know, metal shoes on them, uh, like horses, uh, horses uh, shoes. And we've also got um, some of the elements on the guns. I didn't want to just, you know, have the guns completely metallic. They look a bit weird. I think a combination of uh, black and metallic looks really nice. Uh, and there's some stuff on the belts as well. Now though, we're going to go into some of that sort of vibrant reddish orange and we're going to start um, doing the stripes on the shoulders and the um, the sort of piping around the front of the skirt there. I only did one or two coats. I don't want it to stand out too much and it is going to get swallowed up when I add my weathering and washing to it and stuff as well. So even though it does look very bright at the moment, it's not going to by the end. That's kind of the intent anyway. Um, in the meantime though, while those guys... Um, got done I decided to make some scum for this gang um, I had a few ideas but again strapped for time I made five of these guys with some spare enforcer torsos um, gene stealer cult legs um, hive scum arms and um, some heads that were 3d printed from a mate here in, in uh, Melbourne um, as you can see I've added the magna calls actually instead of the gene stealer cult icons uh, I need to do a couple more of these actually just to make them look a bit better but really really happy with how these guys turned up and I will no doubt paint them in the same scheme I think just to make it a complete gang however um, we'll see how much I like the actual scheme at the end um, as I may change my mind and do the scum in a slightly different scheme but uh, we shall see this guy's looking particularly good actually with the Gene Stealer Colt arms and the shotgun 
Right then, so the next thing I did um, is add a few sort of final highlights. Just one highlight, we're doing the skin here with I think um, Ungore Flesh, I believe is a colour. Um, so we're doing a little bit of that just to bring out the details on the lips and the legs and the noses and the, the mouths and all that stuff. The next thing we're going to do though in the most important stage is of course some um, dryad bark. Another brown here but this 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 time um, not a Citadel Contrast paint. We're going to use um, some sponges that I've torn off one of my kitchen sponges and just break them into sort of rough uh, uneven small pieces that are about the size of, I don't know, a quarter of your finger now I suppose. Um, and then we're going to get some tweezers, um, pinch your missus tweezers when she's out, that's what I've done here. Um, she'd kill me if she found out that I was using her uh, eyebrow tweezers or whatever they are. Um, but as you can see, you're going to need the tweezers just to be able to handle the sponge. If you're using your fingers, you're going to get paint everywhere. I do actually end up using my fingers here as well because uh, I'm lazy and the tweezers were giving me little cramps in my hands because I'm obviously a weakling. But we've got some dried bark here, so I'm going to dab it in there and uh, move it around a bit and then just blot it on the paper just to make sure we don't go in too heavy with this as well. Uh, you probably would have seen people doing this before, but this is one of many uh, sort of weathering effects here. Uh, and I'm just going to be dabbing that around in sort of random motions, particularly around the edges of the armor. And this is really going to dull down that armor and make it look far more realistic, as you can see. Already, um, I'm much happier with the outcome because I think I was a little bit sort of scared at how this was going to turn out before I actually did a little bit of weathering and now it's um, now it's looking pretty good. So um, that's that for now. We're then going to just have a look at some of the other members. Some of them I went a bit too heavy with the weathering but that's fine again because we are going to use some oil washes here as well. Um, and this, this one here is looking quite good. I actually did go in with the brush as well. All right, so here we are nearly at the final stages here. It hasn't taken long at all. This was a speed painting tutorial and it's certainly not up to my normal standard because um, quite honestly, I don't have the time or the patience to get these boys done. However, um, they're looking all right, I think. Um, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, we're at the final stage now. What I'm gonna do is make things even more grimy and even more grim dark, of course, using an oil wash here. So um, I went to the art store just this morning to pick up some very much basics, I suppose. I got a burnt umber, cheap oil paint there. I do um, think that if you're going to get oil paints for doing this kind of thing, just get the cheap ones because if you are only making washes, it won't really make a difference with the quality. I got an ivory black as well. I think those are the two most important colors for grim dark painting in general. I then got an odorless solvent. I think it's really important to get odorless solvents. They're no less toxic. However, they don't stink out your entire house um, or your hobby cupboard or whatever either. Also a cheap synthetic brush is advised. I've got a sort of medium, sort of large-ish brush there as well. Um, very cheap. I've also got a plastic pot that I used the other day and didn't actually wash out properly. So it needs to be chucked out. I'm just gonna use that one. And some cotton buds from the bathroom as well. Um, now I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how I mix things I'm using a teeny bit of the brown and a much teenier bit of the black there as well so I'd say about one part black to four parts umber and then I'm going to mix them with a lot of mineral spirits here and spill them everywhere in the process but mixing that down to make it nice and smooth I'm then going to slap it all over the entire miniature miniature now I'm holding the miniature, I'm not holding it straight up because I don't want the um, oil to actually fall onto the base at all. I don't want gravity to make it um, go onto the base and start pulling because um, that will sort of inhibit my ability to do anything with the bases because the oil can sort of interact a teeny bit with what I want to do. So as you can see, they're all lying down here. Instead of keeping them um, up, we're just going to lie them down so that that excess residue falls off onto the paper towel there instead of um, onto the base, um, which I think is quite an important thing to do. We're then going to just take, take a model uh, and just wick away any of that excess moisture, um, which is, um, you know, just the stuff that you can see where it's obviously wet um, and just leaving the uh, the oil wash in the recesses. Now I did make quite, quite a runny wash there. As you could see, you can make a much thicker wash if you want, but with this one, um, I've made a nice thin one so that it isn't too, too obvious. Um, but it does make a huge difference. It will define everything and bring all the details out much more, um, which really combines well with the slap chop um, sort of technique that we've got here as well. So it's been a very warm um, day here in Melbourne and of course that has allowed the oil paint to um, sort of uh, dry out much quicker. Uh, all the moisture is gone but you can still move the oil paint around so do be careful when you're handling these guys. Um, now 
I'd like to just give a sort of conclusion here, a summary, I suppose, at the end of the video, um, just to sort of say, you know, how the project went on a whole and just reflect on it a little bit. Now, I'm really, really happy with the aesthetic of these guys. I love the kit bash. I really, really am happy with the conversions in general, and I'm looking forward to playing them on the tabletop. However, am I happy with the quality of the paint job? Absolutely not. However, this video did, you know, it was really just supposed to be a rapid speed painting video with a whole bunch of techniques thrown in just to show you newer painters so please don't critique it too much i am uh, generally a better painter than this um, and of course like i said you're your own worst um, enemy when it comes to these things anyway it does sort of prove that if you see a scheme that you see online or whatever and you try and copy it sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't this one didn't quite work out the way that it should have done um, what could i have done differently well i think i just to be honest just rushed things too much here um, but i can totally still at this point go back and add more um, highlights do more stuff um, and just have more um, finesse on these guys um, if I if I want to and that's totally doable especially with oil paints you can paint over them again but that's it for now I can only get really poor photos unfortunately because I haven't got my photo booth that I normally use but I will put some photos up on Instagram in the future but that's it for me for now I hope you enjoyed that please do comment share like subscribe and um, check out my patreon as well and I will catch you in the next vid peace out